Hello knitters, Elena here from Knitting Confessions. Today I wanted to do a video tutorial on how to do Kitchener Stitch in the round. It's almost exactly the same as Kitchener Stitch worked flat with a few differences in how you start and end the piece. So what you'll need for Kitchener Stitch in the round is your work blocked with the, weave, with the ends weaved in, a tapestry needle and a second set of knitting needles for picking up your provisional cast on stitches. So if you've seen my previous video tutorials, you'll know that I really like to use lifelines. I find them very handy in Kitchener Stitch as well. So I have a lifeline on my provisional cast on stitches, the first uh, knit row, and also on my live stitches as well. I find that locking stitch markers are really useful, especially in Kitchener Stitch for the beginning of round stitches and at the halfway point. If you were going to do a twist in your cowl, you will find the halfway point marker very, very useful because this is going to be your beginning of round where you pick up stitches because when you twist it, the other end becomes, the halfway point becomes the beginning of round, and so it just saves you an extra step. But for more detailed instructions on how to do a twist in your work, please check out my other um, video tutorial on that. For this example, we're just going to do regular Kitchener stitch um, with no twist, just to make things easier. So first off, what you do is you have to unravel your provisional cast on. Now you can do it one of two ways. You can either just unravel the stitches and pick them up with the knitting needles or you can pick them up first and then unravel. I personally prefer to pick them up first and then unravel just because it can get, um, I just want to make sure I'm not dropping any stitches. So to pick up all you do is take your knitting needle making sure it's the same size that you did your provisional cast on. It could be a smaller size, but I recommend the same size. And because we have a lifeline that you can see here, we're just gonna insert the needle the same direction as the lifeline. And that ensures that we're picking up all our stitches in the right direction. So you won't have any twisted stitches. So you just simply push your needle through the stitches like so. When it's as small, or really for anything um, that's in the round, I like to do my Kitchener Stitch with Magic Loop. It just, for me, makes it easier and ensures that I'm lining my stitches up perfectly. So that's where this halfway point marker comes in handy because it just shows me, sorry, that's really loud with the knitting needles. Um, it just shows me where I am, um, where the halfway point is and to make sure that both halfway points line up how they should be. So as you can see, picking up stitches is really easy and um, it's a little more cumbersome if you're doing it with the lifeline still on, but as long as you're not using a needle that's any bigger, it shouldn't be a prob too much of a problem. And there we go. Okay, so now they're both on the needles and we're going to unravel our cast on. So again, if you watched my provisional cast on video, you know that I like to cast on about five stitches in the beginning and the tail, my ending tail, I'll cast on 10. So it's really easy to know where I'm going to unravel. You wanna unravel from where your last live stitch is so you just have to very carefully unpick your um, your crochet chain. So there we go. And sometimes the yarn felt a little bit, but all you do is you just pull. Now when you get to this first stitch, if you watched my video again, I like to um, do one extra stitch for my provisional cast down when I'm joining in the round. I just think it makes for a nicer join. It does make undoing the first stitch a little trickier just because 
we've knit those two stitches together. So you just kind of have to look to see where, aha, where it is and just give it a little pull. And as you can see, it's already pulling all my other stitches out of the way. And that's because I was pulling the wrong end. So all you do is you just pull and there you go. You have now undid your provisional cast on stitches and they're ready to go. And with your lifeline, if you had missed picking up a stitch, that's great because you know it's safe. So to set up your provisional cast on, or to set up for Kitchener stitch in the round, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your provisional cast on edge and you're gonna bring it up to meet your live stitches. So the provisional cast on will always be in the front of your Kitchener and the live stitches will always be in the back. You still have two sets of needles. So the blue ones are my provisional cast on, the red are my live stitches. With the provisional cast on stitches, you're gonna be using your front needle for the live stitches, you're gonna be using your back needle. So an easy way to remember is front, front needle, back, back needle. One of the reasons why I like doing magic loop for my provisional cast, or for my Kitchener stitch, sorry, in the round is that you have these extra needles and you can just simply pull the ones that you're not gonna use out of the way so that they're just kind of not, not in the way. The next setup thing that I do, and this will be important later, is you're gonna take your locking stitch marker and put it on the first stitch of both the live stitches and the provisional cast on stitches. And this will just help you. So what that means is that you end up transferring the beginning of round marker to the last stitch for both the front and the back. And that will help when we're finishing our provisional cast on or our Kitchener stitch, sorry. So then you just thread your tapestry needle. And in the beginning, it gets a little bit tangly. So Kitchener stitch, if you've ever done it flat, is the same as it is um, in the round with, like I said, some key differences. There are no setup rounds for provisional cast on or for, for, for Kitchener stitch, sorry, uh, in the round. You just jump right on in. So Kitchener stitch is really easy. The front needle, you're always going to insert your tapestry needle knitwise, pulling the first stitch off. The second stitch, you're gonna insert your tapestry needle purlwise, that stitch stays on. The back row is the opposite. So you're gonna insert your tapestry needle purlwise in the first stitch, pulling that stitch off your needle. Insert your tapestry needle knitwise into the second stitch and that stays on and you'll just repeat it all the way around. So let me show you what that looks like. So with our tapestry needle into the very first stitch of the front needle, you're gonna insert purlwise, sorry, you're gonna insert knitwise, pulling that off. Then you're gonna take your needle, you're gonna insert into the second stitch purlwise, that stitch is gonna stay on and you are gonna pull your yarn through. In the beginning, it can get a little tangly with all the lifelines and the markers, but the farther you get, that, um, that will not be a problem. And it's okay if you accidentally Kitchener your lifeline, nothing bad happens, because that'll just pull out very nicely at the end. So. Sorry, there we go. Okay, so and you're gonna pull it. Okay, now our back needle, we're going to insert our tapestry needle purlwise and pull that stitch off. Into the second stitch, we're gonna insert knitwise and leave it on. Pull our yarn through. We wanna try and match our tension to the rest of our stitches with how tight we're making our Kitchener stitch stitches. So again, in the front, insert purlwise, slip that stitch off, insert, sorry, insert knitwise, slip that stitch off, insert into the second stitch purlwise, keep that stitch on. 
the back, insert purl wise, slip that off. Second stitch, insert knit wise, leave the stitch on. Knit off, purl on, back needle, purl off, knit on, and we're just going to keep repeating this all the way around. Knit off, purl on, purl off, knit on. I'll show you just a few more and then I'll show you how to finish it. I won't make you watch me Kitchener this whole thing because we would be here for quite a while and that would make for a very boring video. Front needle, knit off. Purl on, back needle, purl off, knit on. And you're just going to continue all the way around and as you can see we have our nice new Kitchener stitches looking good. If the gauge is a little wonky, you can tighten them up. It is giving them a little tug. All right, I'm gonna pick back up when I have just a few more stitches so that you can see how to finish your Kitchener stitch in the round. All right, so here we are to our last couple stitches. So all you do, so again, we're going to knit off, purl on, purl off, knit on, knit off, purl on, purl off, knit on. Okay, so we're coming down to our last two stitches. So you're just gonna continue doing the same thing to the last stitch. So you've got one stitch on each needle. And sometimes the needles like to drop their stitch, but that's okay because we have our lifeline. So with this last stitch, and it's a little hard to see because this tube is so small, but here if I flip it kind of inside out a bit there, that makes it easier. So now we're back to our last stitch. And what we're going to do is we're just gonna treat our very first stitch, which is where these stitch markers come in handy, as um, a live stitch. So we're going to knit off, get rid of this needle. and purl into the second one. You see, like I said, this one just wanted to escape. So you just stick your needle back in there. And then we're going to purl off, get rid of that needle, knit into this second stitch. Oops. Wise. Give it a nice tug. So there you go. So you've now grafted <laughs> a very small cowl. Um, and so to finish, I use duplicate stitch. I find it's just the easiest way to go about doing it. So you take your markers off. We don't need them anymore. And once you've ensured that all of your stitches were Kitchenered correctly and you're happy with them, we can get rid of our lifelines. Just 
So now how you do a duplicate stitch, it's really easy. So with your tapestry needle, we're going to insert into the hole we came out of. There we go. And just pick a spot, any spot, it doesn't matter. But see how this makes a V? You've got your V's marching up. You're going to insert through the hole of one of these V's. We're go this is where we'll be duplicate stitching, this row. So we go above one row and we're going to go sideways into the V's. And now we're going to go back into the same hole we came out of. So we skip where the stitch will be placed and go into the hole we came out of. And now we're going to come right back out to the next stitch out that next hole. So you're always working below and above the actual duplicate stitch. And you're going to pull your yarn so it matches the tension of that stitch. So again, we're going to go skip this stitch. We're going to go above. Pull the yarn through and down into the V and come out directly through the next one. And so I usually do about five to 10 of these duplicate stitches just to make sure it's really there and secure. And since this is just a swatch, I'll finish with this one. So to finish, you're just gonna go into that same hole and again, just pick a spot randomly, farther away, pull through, come out a random hole and just clip, give it a little tug, and now your end's just nice and floating, and there you go. That is how you do Kitchener Stitch in the Round. You can see you, um, that it's a little kind of obvious where it is, so if you just give it a quick little steam with a steamer, uh, that'll get rid of that and then it'll all blend. I hope you guys found this helpful and happy knitting.